feels really good to be sleeping back on a van again. But uh, last night, I checked my voltage. Oh, now it's back up to good spots. But it was down at like 11.1. And uh, when that kind of stuff happens, especially when there's no draw, you know that there's something seriously wrong with your batteries. So I went in and I separated the two and I just let it sit there for a bit and check the voltage after about three minutes. And sure enough, the voltage on this one bounced right back up to like 11.8. The voltage on this one dropped down to 10 volts, under 10 volts. So this is the, uh, this is the twin to the other one that failed in Winnipeg. Um, and this is an, another battery from a different set that I got. So this one finally died as well, which I was kind of expecting it to be the twin to the other one that failed. So now I'm down to just one battery. Um, but, you know, it's good that I at least have one of them to hold me over. And uh, I'll be buying more deep cycles soon, that's for sure. Because of the way my solar panel works, um, I don't ever lack power in the day. So the battery really doesn't affect that. Um, I always have lots of power in the day. Um, what I do need is power at night. So I want a battery bank that can charge my laptop, I think once, maybe twice, um, charge all my five volt devices, which isn't a big drain, run my lights and my fans and all that, run the blower for the furnace or the fantastic fan, which has its certain draw. But now I'm adding this dehumidifier here and it runs on 12 volt. And uh, it'll probably pull a decent amount of juice throughout the night. And I'd like to be able to run it all throughout the night. Um, especially when it gets really cold. So I think I'm going to have to look into maybe two deep cycle batteries. Just to make sure I can run this. A one deep cycle battery will probably just run this thing through the night. Um, I don't want to invest a ton of money in this. Because I'm going to abuse these batteries again like I did the last ones. So... I don't know. We'll see if I can rope up a really good deal. Today is the last day of my motorcycle school. So I should be getting my M2 today, which means I get insurance and I can ride my motorcycle. That's uh, super exciting. I gotta book up some time with Sean because I think I might need to replace a couple other parts of my motorbike. They're a little worn, the drivetrain and stuff like that. And he's got spare parts lying around, so... I'm so excited to ride my bike! Alright, I'm going to start my course. I'm not going to vlog the course because, uh, well, I think it would be kind of dangerous to vlog while I'm driving. These are the bikes we're testing on. This one right here is a lot like my bike. Standard. Whatever. I'm actually finding I'm really enjoying the sport bikes. But this is my jam right here. The Enduro. kind of wish I bought an Enduro. It's just so peppy and so much fun. I assume when I get to highway speeds, this is not going to be the bike for that. So, uh, that's my silver lining, but I am full of buyer's regret. I want this so bad. Officially passed. Hey. Feels good. Alright, wicked. Now I have my M2. Wow. Now the real thing is seeing what you know is wrong on his list. And, yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, you know, I, as he said, uh, we are now experts at parking lot driving. The real test is out there. So, that'll be fun. <laughs> Figure it out. In the van, it is really hot today. Like, I was sweating so much on my, my motorcycle leathers. Anyway, um, pick up this guy right here. Hey, up you come. And we're gonna go pick up a friend of mine, Jessica, the baseball fanatic. She's been in previous episodes. We're gonna go swimming.
Come on, buddy. Hello. I'm back in the van. The transmission's been rebuilt. Um, it's great. It's awesome. It's driving around. I've got loads of power, but, and here's a big but, we're not quite there yet. There's still something wrong. It shifts amazingly. The engine's super responsive. I switch gears, no problem. <laughs> but um, it's running a little hot. Can't quite figure out why. Got a few theories. I'm going to test them out very shortly. But uh, So I'm actually late right now to meet a guy named Paul. Now, Paul's got a CNC shop across town, and he does all these amazing works with wood. Um, and he says he wants to build something for the van. Uh, I feel kind of bad because, I mean, like, it's a rough, rough little... Hold on. It's a rough space, you know what I mean? It's not like uh, a very luxurious van. Um, so whatever he does make me, I, I gotta make sure I gotta treat it real right and uh, not mess it up because this guy does fantastic work. Champs with me, we're gonna head across town. Ready to go, buddy? Let's do this. We're here, champ. We made it. Okay, well, go say hi. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just open this for you. Okay, go say hi. Go say hi, champ. Go say hi. Sorry, I have the loudest and rudest dog in the world. What are you so excited? What are you so excited for? What is it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's okay. Oh my god. Uh, I saw you on. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, good. Oh, yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, that's slimy. <laughs> He's a slimy dog. You gotta be careful. That's definitely slimy. I forgot what that's like. But, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm self employed. I, uh, I, uh, I kind of just figure things out as I go. You know, I don't like working for. Uh, Companies, I, I like working for myself. So, I know that feeling. You know, you're into photography and stuff, and uh, no, I like making stuff. I uh, I took some engineering and um, computer design and stuff, so I kind of just figured out what I'm uh, what I'm best at, and just kind of faked it until I made it, kind of thing. So and I'm now, still working at it. You know, I'll give you a tour of my shop. Yeah, right? now it's the legendary workshop. This is this is my wet dream. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> like this is exactly what I want <laughs> so bad. Oh my god! Look at these doors. Yeah. Wait a second. Holy. So you got a Yamaha? Eh? I do have a Yamaha. It's not what's, quite what's, like this. What's the engine size? <laughs> it's a whopping 400 cubic oh, centimeters. Okay. Yeah, this is 1300. 1300. Yeah. And this was my first bike. Like this is the bike I learned how to ride on, right? You're you. <laughs> so I was daring. <laughs> so jumping in the deep end, kind of like the van. You just like. Yeah, you just go for it. Go I mean, for it. Try really hard not to screw this up, champ. Bye bye. So it's unlocked, so you can. Uh... Yeah, it's just about using your legs, so your knees to uh, balance it. But this. That's a lot easier to balance. Than yeah, it took it took me so a few cool. months to kind of fit into the right size because I'm a big guy. I mean, you're 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 surprisingly taller than me, but I'm six two, and a lot of the bikes just felt like uh, I was sitting on a toy. Especially the small displacements. Yeah, but it's laid back. It's kind of like a Harley, but it doesn't have all the, um, you know, I hate to say it, but you know, uh, the stuff that goes with the Harley. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, 
you know, that's not me. Well, so also, it'll probably still be running this time next year. That's another thing. <laughs> I've, I've got a lot of family friends who own Harleys. They love it, but they told me not to get one. My so. mom and father both uh, are both Harley riders. Uh, my mom had a Sportster. My dad had lots of different Harleys. And he finally he went in and got a, a BTX 1900. Oh, okay. And that was the end of Harleys for him. Yes. Picked yeah. up his first, like, Japanese cruiser and it right. just worked every day. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm over it. <laughs> is that a Yamaha? Uh, or is that a Honda? GTX, I think it's a Honda. Yeah. Honda, okay, yeah. But it's it, it works great. I, I, I've been really driving. I, I got it in 2012. Is this thing made of aluminum and hopes and dreams or something? Yeah. Like, it's so light. <laughs> Oh, it's comfortable though, but you, you do feel the power, and actually my wife goes on the back with me. Uh, Slips right off the back, the you should say. She was scared of it, she didn't yeah. want to yeah. do it, but as soon as she, we went on our first ride, she was sold, so it's like, it's one of our, the hobby things that we do uh, when, when the kids oh, are at school. Man. Look at <laughs> all of this. Look, like, you got electronics in a million pieces over here. Yeah, for um, fixed, fixed game systems as well. Old uh, audio and visual equipment, every tool, all the glue. <laughs> All the things. Magnifying with lights, yeah, that's necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and this, this is, is the bad boy. This CNC. is the big CNC machine. Yeah. Those those lights, though, maybe I can look and see if I can find something online that mm -hmm. would, like a fan or whatever. It'd be nice to get a fan up there to circulate air a bit. Yeah. And then some lights, and then we can see and see something that would fit those fittings Absolutely. into them. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, we yeah. can mount that all there. Because yeah. that way, at least, if it's up there, I'm much less likely to break it. Because right. if you're really worried about breaking your nice work, <laughs> that's what I'm worried about mostly. No, so Paul's going to help me sort out this, probably. So we're looking at trying to figure out what the hell. I got two 12-volt leads. Maybe a TV? Maybe a fan? Maybe some other lights? Who knows? But uh, he's got the shop and the equipment to make something spectacular, so we're going to have to figure that out. What's but, uh, your social media? Fledgenet Workshop. Fledgenet Workshop. So you got the website, I got uh, Instagram. And that Instagram has like a lot of his work on it, yes. which like blew me away. Which is like, when, because like sometimes people offer stuff, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, it's just a hobbyist, you know. And I went and take a look at his Instagram, and it instantly had me reconsidering mm -hmm. the fact that I was putting it into this van. Yeah. Like, it's way too nice. <laughs> way too nice for this van. We'll, but, we'll uh, do like a pimp your ride. <laughs> yeah, a pimp my ride episode. This is pimp my house and pimp my, my car house. at the same time. Yeah, pimp my van. All right. Okay, so I was concerned because my engine was running hot, and even on the drive here is actually running hot. So I thought, okay, the balance for fuel and air is good. Timing is good. There's no reason why it should be overheating. I just got the radiator rebuilt, and it was running like down at one third before. Now it's always at two third idle, and then if I go up a hill, it goes up near near over boiling point so this line actually was recently fixed i don't know if you can see that this guy is a vacuum power diverter that goes through a thermostat under here and measures my air temperature and if it's cold it pulls this valve up and pulls the air off of my exhaust manifold instead of from the ram air intake at the front now I guess what's wrong is the thermostat must be jammed because this is staying open all the time and pulling air all the time off my headers no matter how hot it is. So I guess I'm gonna disconnect the thermostat, put the vac put a plug in the vacuum and uh, hope for the best. Okay I've got my tools necessary, a zip tie and an old bolt. Now pull off this air cleaner. Shut that down. Ram air intake. Hopefully that fixes all my problems. So it would appear that despite my little repair, the van is still running hot. It's about like 21 degrees, 22 degrees today. So it's quite cool. Um, and it's like damp and moist. There's no reason why it should be running over, over temperature. And uh, to put it in perspective, it usually runs down at a third. 
the, the first, the second notch there. And then right now it's like idling at the third notch. And then if I push it hard, like on the highway or up a hill or something, it climbs right over that. It doesn't quite burst over the, the top of it, but it's not good. And you can feel it on the hood, like the uh, radiator is obviously working overtime. Um, my efficiency, my fuel efficiency is pretty much spot on though, so I can't tell. I don't know what's going on. It's either running lean or it's running rich. Check the plugs, they look normal. Like, I don't know. It didn't run this hot before. This is new. One wagging tail. Off we go. Get your ball. Apparently it's at my other sister's house. So now I'm driving more, more downtown. I'm gonna take my mom's car, cause it's faster. This is Mark, this is Dave. Dave is marrying my sister, Mark is dating my other sister. They are well familiar with the Styles Girls, or TSG as it's known. TSG. 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 It's good. It's nice. Uh, they're driven. <laughs> uh, oh god, here we go. They're forward thinking. Uh, they're strong willed. Um, very strong willed. So, sometimes Dave and I end up with our tails between our legs. Um, but we try and stand up for ourselves. That's good, so you should really try to stand up for yourself from time to time, Mark. That's... Yeah. Most of the time, most of the time, they win. <laughs> but, uh, Not a competition, but they win. You know, <laughs> they win. Uh, TSG, they're, bit, they're, you know, they're, they're very unique, very bright, very funny, gorgeous. Oh my god, what are you marrying them? Uh, Wait, you. <laughs> they think they're right about everything. Yeah. <laughs> Easy now. Don't get in trouble here. <laughs> and they are actually. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good save. Good save. That's right. <laughs> yeah.